This is my wife's portrait from about 1963. So we're going to do a photo restore from start to finish. Uh, one of the things I always do is make a duplicate of the background layer. So control J, J is in jump. And let's zoom in on some of the bad areas. We can fix the easy stuff first, which is one of those things that I sometimes like to do. It all depends on what kind of mood I'm in. We have so many tools inside of Photoshop to fix things now. It's uh, a whole new era when it comes to Photoshop. The default tool you see here is the spot healing brush tool and basically you just paint an area and it cleans it up for you. So you can do a lot of that as long as you're not at the edge of the frame or touching a solid color of some kind. So there's a lot of this that we can do in this image. Quite effective. We'll just move around and get those as we can. Again, if they're against the frame, sometimes it can make a smear. It uh, doesn't cost anything extra if you try it. If it fails, you know, we, we try something else. And normally I like to make my brush the size of the problem, but uh, in this case we don't have much out here to interfere with what we're doing. So we can get by with a larger brush to cover more territory a little quicker. Now if we try that, did okay. Glad it did. We just keep moving up. And it is time consuming. I've, I've had people uh, complain about how long this takes. When I first started doing Photoshop, this would have taken uh, a good day, a solid day, to, to work on it and get the blemishes out, make some of the other changes. Now we're soon going to be working in an area where this tool is not going to work and we'll see in just a few minutes what we can do every time I run this tool I'm just amazed now you see that didn't d didn't work there let's move that on over and take it all the way in see what it does great to me it's you know it's just crazy how easy this, this is to do. I've worked on photographs that um, basically most of the emulsion that see that just made some smears. We're gonna have a little more trouble with some of this. There's clusters of and, and there's a little orangey tint to the background that we're not completely getting rid of. Sometimes just going over these things and over them will make them go away. Now right there there's still a tinge and I don't think we're going to get rid of it that way. So I'm going to go back over here and go to the patch tool and see what we can do with it. With the patch tool you basically can find, let's go down here, uh, an area that's bad and just slide it over to an area that's good. Like grab that, you click inside that selection and drag it to a place that's good. And it works pretty nice. And the nice thing about this, unlike the rubber stamp tool, it adjusts for light and shadows. So you don't have to worry about if you sampled material from the other side of the image you don't have to worry about it being lighter or darker Photoshop will take care of that for you and if you bring that down and keep it lined up 
usually does a very nice job. Got a little speck there that doesn't want to go away. Let's try the spot healer and I'm going to make the brush smaller. I think it might be on my screen. See what we can do. We've got a lot of area here that's not good. I expect some weird. Actually, it did a wonderful job. Still need to clean it up a little bit. Some smears here and there, but now we've got kind of a strange area right in here. Uh, I'm going to fix that with the patch tool. Just going to grab hold of some of that and it'll help to blend it. How nice is that? Now we've got a lot of stuff here. See how that blended that color and everything back in? and see what happens. See, it, we even sampled some of the blue then and it still compensated for it. And we're in the blue and you can see a, a highlight in that it shows the tinge of blue but when you let go it color corrects and light corrects automatically for us. It's just an amazing set of tools anymore for fixing images. Slide this all on over with the space bar held down. Really uh, makes me want to stand up and applaud this software because it does such a wonderful job. And I know not everyone can appreciate it as much as I do because I just have so much experience with um, the old tools. So I really appreciate the new tools and fixing all this stuff. It's amazing. And I don't mind going over stuff a few times. I want it to look right. I want it to look really nice. That's what uh, why people ask me to do it. They expect me to do a good job for them and I do everything in my power to make it happen and you, you know you notice I'm, I'm not making really good selections I'm just making some really rough ones and here we go now we've got lines going this way and a line going this way I'm going to just tackle a little bit of this at a time just move it over a slight little bit. Not even trying to get all of it at one whack. Just a little here and there. You try to do too much at once and you will get really terrible results. You notice if you start like we want to get rid of this blemish here just click here go around and once you hit this side just let go and it'll snap back to the area that we need that in now these are not freckles this is uh, a plastic was laid over the top of this and it uh, has definitely made an impression on the face and we've got to get rid of it and we'll do just that when we get everything else where I want it to be you see we've got some pretty hairy stuff coming up here now we've done quite a bit of healing and really no saving which is never a good practice so right now I'm going to go do a save and I'm going to make a new copy of this.
and I'm just put on this when I'm healing it. So I'm going to save it to my desktop as a PSD file. Save. So now the next time I save, it's going to save to this one. So as I keep working, I will uh, keep saving. It's a terrible thing to work for a half an hour or an hour, lose power, or the hard drive messes up, or something on your computer tries to update and you didn't know anything about it. Next thing you know, your stuff is gone, and it can be a real heartbreaker. You can lose a lot of time, and really the amount of frustration can make you pretty upset. Alright, it's time to come in to work on the hair a little bit. And I'm just, you know, trying to get a little bit here and there. I'm not trying to do everything at once. Could have been a little better. I want to just blend that a little bit. Hair back in there. And let's do a little segment right here. And you want don't want to move this into an air er, an area that the hair is going a different way because then that's going to look pretty rough. So I just got this piece. The hair is going like this. So I'm just going to move that into an area where it's doing the same thing. The hair is going a particular direction. I'm going to try to take this part out. And it didn't do a real good job. It really softened it up. So I'm going to have to work on that. Let's uh, concentrate on getting rid of this really bad stuff, though. Yeah, that didn't help. So what we're going to do is control Z to get that back. I'm going to go back a few steps. And we'll fix this a little bit differently. Let's try the healing brush tool, which will allow us to sample from one place by holding down the Alt key and then paint and let go. Sample and paint. It's really wanting to smear, so you got to be careful. And we get down in here, and it's a whole nother ball game. I'm going to sample right here with the Alt key down. Sample up here. You say, well, how in the world are we ever going to be able to fix that eyeball? Well, it's not going to be as hard as you might think. We've got that pretty good. Let's tackle this. blurring a little bit so let's let's be careful there we may actually have to get some hair to fix some hair let's uh, back off control alt Z here a few times I don't want that all smeared up so I'm going to get the clone stamp or the rubber stamp whichever one you want to call it and I can again go sample from an area that's similar to this. So you got to kind of look around and wear some hair that's going that direction. And this is about the only hair right over here that is going to work. Make sure all layers is turned on so you can sample from uh, different places easily. I'm going to create a new layer so go down here to the bottom of the layers palette and click on the new layer icon 
because we're going to paint on the new layer. So if we mess up, we can just undo it very, very easily. Let's see. Let's get some more right in here. And remember, a key to this is sample often. You can paint in little strokes. I'm sampling again. Every time you see that target appear, I'm resampling. So I'm going to try to blend that a little bit. Sample and paint. Alright, now then we can get in here, left bracket to make that smaller, and get some of this stuff in here. Here's the target, so what does that mean? That's right, I'm sampling every time you see that round target pop up. Let's undo that. Come from over here. And we've got a few places in here. Just want to do this as small as you can on the little specks because otherwise if you use a big tool you uh, blur things a little bit. And let's go from out here and paint a little and from right there. Now I want to show you something here real quick as I get rid of these little pieces. It, just like if you're drawing or painting in Photoshop, you can draw or paint a straight line fairly easy. And you can also do that with the rubber stamp tool or the clone stamp tool. I'm going to sample from right here and then click right here. Go down here and press the shift key, hold that down, and left mouse click. Go back up and left mouse click again and it paints in a straight line and can be very beneficial getting rid of things in your image. Okay, I'm going to sample here, click here, come down here, shift click, go back up here so I can get all that. Shift clicking, the name of the game there. Now once in a while, I'm sure it's going to be the same for you as it is for me, I get curious. Have I really made much of a difference? Let's do it right in there. And what I mean is, I've, I, you know, I've worked a little while. Is it, am I really having much of an effect on the image? So. I hit control zero or control yeah control zero and I go up here to my history or go here to get your history and I go all the way to the top and click on the original and look what happens in our image that's where we were that's where we are so yeah we've made a giant difference haven't we so I'm going to go up here and tackle this eye. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to come back down here. Let's just uh, click and highlight layer one. And I'm going to take my lasso tool and click and drag a selection around this eye. Just like that. Now I'm going to do a control J. J is in jump. Control J. That puts the eyeball on its own layer. I turn that layer off. That's that's the layer where we've cloned over the bad spots. So let's turn that all back on, including that. And I'm going to click on the move tool or press the letter V as in victory. And here's the eye going over. 
Now, it won't work if we just put that eye down just like that. Because then our eyes are going to look a little funny. Because they're both, you know, right eyes. So what we're going to do is transform that and flip it. So we do a control T. T is in tango to bring up the transform. Move your mouse inside the bounding box. Right click and go down and say, click on flip horizontal. That turns the eye in the direction we want it in. Then outside the bounding box we can rotate the eye to get the right angle on how this should look. Now the other thing is what if we turn down the opacity so we can see better how to line those up. So that's almost right on the money where the other eyeball is. And we can hold down our control key and click and move it just a little bit. Try to match it up with the eye that's under it as best we can. Go back over, run the opacity back up. Then we double click inside that and we're not in bad shape. Now here's the rest of the trick. We need to click on the eraser tool or press the letter E. We need that to be soft so we click up here on the brushes and we run the hardness all the way back over. So now this is a soft brush and I'm erasing. So we just erase like that. Now the problem is that's a hundred percent and we really need to lower that around 25 or 30 percent so let's go back up here let's magnify it and I just all I'm doing is holding down my control key and space bar or I'm sorry <laughs> you need to uh, erase that a little bit of time but to magnify it, I'm just uh, holding down the, the control key and the space bar and clicking. All right. If I want to make it smaller, I hold down the control key, the alt key, the space bar, and left click. And we zoom back out. Let's make that brush smaller. Now I'm just painting on the edges until those layers just come together and you can't tell that there's anything new there. Have we made a difference? Yeah, we need to move that eye over some more, don't we? So, move tool, V. V is in victory, and move that over a little bit. And down. That's pretty good shape. Let's go control zero and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now, when I transformed it, I told you to use the control key because we need the shape to be slightly different than the other eye. If they're exactly the same, then it's kind of a giveaway that you know the eyes are too perfectly uh, the same. So when we do a control T, and hold down the control key and grab a corner we can make that eye slightly different not too much now notice I've kinda of got it bulging up a little bit but we can bring the eye in a little bit change it a little bit so it's not the same as the other eye control zero again there we go I'm gonna go back to the way I did have it I liked it right there better alright so we just took care of a major deal by doing that. Now see the shadow area that's over here on the right and it's much lighter here? I'm gonna fix that I think with the uh, patch tool. And I'm just gonna grab a little bit of both. So I can go like this and grab both angles or both areas and bring it over here. Try to soften that up a bit. Sorry. Got to be on the right layer. See, I'm trying to do this on layer three, which only has the eyeball in it. So let's go back down here and try that again. Now we're 
were having an effect. So you want that transition to be, uh, you know, soft and, and gradual. You don't want a big straight line of shadow. All right, we made a big difference there. Let's try to do a close one there, get that line taken care of. Still got a little bitty bit of stuff in here and a lot up here. So I'm going to go up here and really magnify. I'm going to hold down my control key, my space bar, and I'm going to click and drag that. And really the best cure for this is to use the rubber stamp tool. So press the letter S or go over and click on the rubber stamp. Make my brush smaller. I'm at 100%. Uh, let's see what the softness is on my brush. It's all the way soft. Zero hardness is soft, so that's good. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click right on this line and then go down here and paint. Click right on there and paint. Let's go over here and let's just paint some of that out. And this other stuff, I'm just going to go back, turn my little spot healing brush back on, and let that fix a bunch of stuff for me. That one piece was up here. Uh, let's just click on sample all layers so we don't run into problems here. Now sometimes you can do this stuff all day long and I'm switching to the rubber stamp tool. Let me go up here. And you know, you can overkill on it. I'm kind of a perfectionist, so I do a lot of healing. I I don't like stuff in my picture even though whoever sees this is not going to see all the little details cuz theirs isn't going to be blown up to 236% like I have it here this is this is really blown up now I'm gonna take this whole area and use the patch tool and slick this up a little bit bring it over here and again you gotta be on the right layer I'm gonna I don't need this other stuff now the eyes fixed uh, all of these are looking good to simplify uh, repairing this I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on the flatten image. Let me move our box so you can see this. I'm going to click on flatten image. So now it's all one layer. And I'm going to move that over just a little bit. And I'm going to grab this, take it down here to the really nice looking area, and get all that scratchiness out of there. Get a bunch of this. Come down here. I don't want to clone those dots into another area. Then I just make more problems for myself. Let's get another little area here. Let's uh, zoom out. Control minus. Let's just see what we can get by with. Not great. Not great. Let's control Z that. Uh, let's see how much more of this we can get rid of. Okay, it softened things up a little bit out there, but I can live with that. Take it down here. Now, there are people that make really good money at doing this. And photo restoration is an art in and of itself. I don't begrudge anybody that's making 50 and $75 an hour 
doing photo restorations. But I think you can see that you can get a lot of work done in this little flyaway here. There. Let's zoom back out. Control minus. And let's do a control zero. So I think you see we've come a long way. We've got a little bit down here. Still yet. But still not satisfied with the cheek here. Let's fix this eyebrow a little bit better. I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to clone, make this a little bit bigger and brush size up, alt click And let's fix this up here. And it's a little scribbly looking right now, so let's do this. Let's lower the opacity, and we're just going to paint inside that area and I'm going to paint from in here and just smooth that out a little bit and I'm going to grab some from over here and paint that in obviously you can't do it from a real dark area or a real light area or you're going to really change it let's go back out looking better a little bit of a shadow in here, right? So, right there. So let's do the same thing there. I'm going to make my brush bigger. Sample over here. My opacity is down to 42%. So I'm basically just painting in some color to kind of cover that dark area that we don't need some of it right here it's a little darker than it should be let's undo that I need to be sampling this darker area change that opacity get it down even lower there we go make this a little bigger And that's filled in pretty nicely. Eye looks good. There's a little spot right there that's uh, we need to go back to 100%. Left bracket key to make the breast smaller. I'm going to sample from right here, come down here, and just paint a little bit. There we go. Now, to get rid of the problems right here. Let me flatten this again. I can flatten layer one on the background layer just by holding down the control key and pressing the letter E. E is an echo. Now I'm going to make another layer that's just the same by doing a control J. Okay so now we need to do something about the gummy surface that's on here from the plastic so what I'm going to do is make one more layer <clears throat> of this layer one and make a copy of it. Control J. Now on this layer I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to go down to noise, dust and scratches because we want to be able to soften this up so the uh, basically the trashy uh, surface here doesn't show so much. So I'll lower the trash the threshold down and bring up the radius way too much got to be careful you don't want to go too far too fast this basically dials back in detail so if we go 
back and then just take this slider up a little bit at a time until the blemishes aren't a problem. Let's lower that back down. Let's go a little bit lower with the threshold and then take this back down. Alright, we're going to say that's fine. Now if we zoom out a little bit, you'll see it's too soft. But we did get rid of the, the garbage. But everywhere, everything is soft. So what we're going to do is put a layer mask on this and let the important stuff show back through. So down here at the bottom of the layer panel, right here is the layer mask. Click on that. We're going to paint with a brush, press the letter B or go over to the toolbox, uh, tool panel and get the brush. Make sure black is over white. Let's make sure this brush is soft. So we go up here, hardness is off. Make the size a little bit smaller. Opacity, let's turn that down to around 45%, 46% in this case and I'm going to now paint with black and bring the eyes back in. So I'm just painting, 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 bringing those back in. Now on the lips, let's blow this up. So I'm holding down the control and the space bar. I want to bring them back a little, but I don't want that other horrible texture coming back with it. Okay. So we've got a little bit of the texture coming back in. That's far enough. We don't need to go any further than that. Let's bring some of the nose in. Go along the edges. Give some definition back. Now, the eyebrows can be brought back. And let's zoom back out. I'm doing a control minus and let's make the brush much bigger and bring back the hair you don't have to bring it back all the way either a little bit in the forehead now I don't like some of that noise up there so I'm going to switch back to white I'm going to press the letter X to toggle the colors over here and Gonna take that down just a little bit where that some of that noise was. Okay, now you can see over here in the layers palette the shape that we have. We actually can see her eyes, nose, lips, and some of the hair. And if you want to try to bring back a little bit of the skin tones, you can, especially where you know that awful stuff wasn't existing. But if it comes back too much, all you have to do is switch to uh, white and bring it back. So let's try it with black on. Take a little bit of this down. So a little too much noise coming back left bracket to make that smaller let's switch to white so we press X and take that back out and some of that back out and that looks a lot better let's look at one more way of getting rid of this uh, garbage in our image that comes from that plastic uh, laying down on top of this kind of a gummy surface uh, all we need to do is go down to the bottom of the tools palette right here where the square box is with a circle inside. This is the quick mac, mac, mask tool. Quick mask. Uh, if we click on it one time, we only turn it on and you'll see. Uh, let's double click it real quick. Uh, this comes defaulted with masked areas marked. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense to, to do that. It should be on selected areas because as we paint with this, we want that to be our mask area. If we have it this way, um, it everything that's opposite 
is selected. So that's not very intuitive or handy. So let's just click OK. And notice up here now it says, uh, here's my file name, and it says Quick Mask 8. So it's now in 8 bit mode, Quick Mask is going to paint. So I need to turn on the paintbrush, and I'm going to make this brush a little bit bigger. I need to make sure it's soft. So the hardness is all the way to the left, which means it is soft. Okay, now, if I click and paint, I'm going to be painting with Quick Mask. So it's a red ruby lith color. So that's what it looks like right there. So I'm only going to paint in the areas where this sticky looking stuff is. A little bit of garbage that's there. And let's get this in here. And I'm going to make my brush bigger with the right bracket key. And I'm going to paint some of this down through here. This is actually a quicker fix. And you may prefer this. I kind of like this way of doing it. And paint this up here. Right there. That looks like that's got most of it. Uh, then all we have to do is click on this again, or we can just press Q, and that turns into a selection area. And this is going to be really a feathered selection because we used a soft brush. I know that sounds strange, but because it's soft, the selection is feathered. Uh, we can go back into it by simply pressing Q again, and we can paint a little bit more. Q again and we've got this. So you don't have to go down here and click on the Quick Mask tool. You can always just click Q. Alright, we've got our selection. We're going to go up to Filter, Blur, and down to Gaussian Blur. And then we just dial in how much blur we want. And you see if I do a control D to turn the marching ants off, I think you see that's a pretty efficient way to get rid of that sticky stuff. Alright, hope this helped. Alright, now down here we still have a little spot. Let's go ahead and sandwich all this again. So I'm going to do a control E, control E, and we're all the way down to there. I'm going to turn on my spot healing brush make it a little bit bigger and I think we're in pretty good shape let's do a we can go now this was actually in the uh, the painting of the picture it was actually there but let's let's see if we can't soften that up a little bit So we'll just kind of blend that together instead of that being such a hard line. And a little bit of that there and there. Maybe a little bit more. And over here. There I think we've done, got a pretty good job on that. Control zero to bring that back to size. Again, if you want to soften it some more, you certainly can do that. And even up here. And if we want to, you know, be a little bit more drastic with that, we can go back, grab the patch tool, and just have that blend. Alright, now we've got it looking pretty good. There's only one thing. My wife's hair was not uh, red. So they did, this is all hand colored for her portrait. So what we could do is select the hair, generally speaking, uh, and what I do is do the quick mask mode a lot. Down here at the bottom of the layers palette is a little box and if you double click that you'll get this quick mask options box 
you want it on selected areas. It comes defaulted as masked areas. It makes no sense to have that. So I always click on uh, selected areas. And you click on a brush. And notice right up here now this says quick mask. This is going to let us paint with a ruby lith color. And you can double click back here again. And you can make that ruby lith color darker. You can paint 100%. It just looks like red paint over the top of her hair. But if you do that, excuse me here, got to go back to the quick mask. See, it's gone from the file name. Q again. If you um, do it at 100%, then you can't tell that you've got everything painted. You can't really see underneath very well. So we're going to do our best to paint in the lines, so to speak. And once we get the edges of this selected, and that's all we're doing. We're actually painting with a selection tool. Because look what happens if I click that box once. It all turns into a selection. So that's that's what we're doing here. We're and we're doing it not at a hundred percent that's my bad now you see how much darker it is I thought it was a little pale and it doesn't hurt to have it pale like that at the edges that's just the same thing as feathering I'm gonna make my brush bigger to kinda of speed this along you don't need to see tons of this to get the idea but what we're doing is making a selection of her hair because that's the only part that I want to make darker. We'll make it smaller with the left bracket key as I go. And if I get it where I don't want it, I press the letter X to paint with white just like before. Now we're going to zoom way in so I can get this little bit of hair because I don't want that to be a different color than than the other. And we'll just say that that's great for there. And get here. And again, if I do something like that, I can just switch that to white or press the letter X and paint with white to get back. Press X again to paint with the red. And let's go down here. So some of this is, I didn't paint it good and solid, and wherever it's not solid, it's going to be more feathered. And we're going to say that's wonderful. I'm doing a control zero. Oh, didn't get this, did I? Not well at all. And that's some of that flyaway hair up there, but we, we want to change it. Okay, now control zero. Her hair is not really painted red. That's only what's called ruby lith for masking and all I have to do now is press the letter Q or click back down here on the quick mask tool and that all turns into a selection now it should be fairly soft because we used a soft edge brush what I'm going to do is do a control J to put just the hair on its own layer and that's what our hair looks like on its own layer and see We've got those soft edges. All right. Now I can control it enough that if I go up to uh, use saturation and take the lightness down, then I'm getting her hair color. Uh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have moved saturation. I want to take the lightness down. And I only want it to be on this layer. So I hold down the Alt key, and that will clip that into this layer. If I click Alt again, it now makes the whole layer underneath dark. 
alt click and now just the hair is being affected see and that's really jet black which is too far so something right in there just get the other side of the, that looks pretty good uh, I did see one place right up here that still had a smudgy in it so I'm going to turn on the get a new layer up here so I click on the new layer icon I'm going to turn on the rubber stamp or press S make my brush bigger drop my opacity and I'm going to sample right up here and paint to get rid of gotta be using all layers and see how that just painted that back out of there so we got rid of the smudgy Just control zero again one final thing that we need to do to this that um, I didn't address a while ago in the eyes see we got a catch light coming top right low left and here it's top left low right so we need to have those the same so what I can do I'm gonna flatten all this stuff control E several times or not I'm gonna flatten it just go up to there we go and I what I'm gonna do now is make a elliptical selection of just the eyeball and if I hold down the shift key it becomes a perfect circle so I'm gonna grab that much let go and I'm going to do let's do a little bit more let's grab that and I'm moving it with the space bar sometimes it's hard to get it just where you want it a little bit more inside there we go I'm going to do a control J and I'm going to move just this part of the eye over here change the opacity so we can see that we're lined up or not looks pretty good right where it is and now I can do what I did while ago I'm going to blow it up control space uh, bar and I'm going to turn on a brush, actually a racer, and I want this to the opacity to be way down here. And we're just going to go around the edges so that blends in. Just the edges is all you want to get so it looks like it belongs there and now let's zoom out control zero and our hint our little light reflections in the eyes are now coming from the same direction which is important looks funny otherwise bye bye